How Hunter's Pets work and the system in general has gone through substantial changes in Wrath of the Lich King Classic, to the point where I thought it was worth having its own short video to dive into all of the talent trees. Yep, you heard that right, pet talent trees. The difference between the three types of pets being ferocity, cunning and tenacity. Looking at some key buffs that some pets bring and exactly what are exotic pets and are they useful. Exotic pets will only be available to BM hunters, but if you really like collecting pets, like this Devil Saw from Sholazar Basin, then having a BM off spec might be for you. I do think most hunters at one point or another are going to want to spec BM just to go around and try and get one of the spirit beasts. If not one, maybe all. Even though it's not actually about the pets themselves, it does fall within the pet system. And it's worth mentioning that you don't need to continuously go back to your stable whenever you want to change your pet. This is thanks to the ability called Call Stabled Pet, where you can remotely out in the open world switch what pet you've got in your main slot to your stabled slot and get a new stabled pet out. And this is only on a five minute cooldown. It was actually a 30 minute cooldown early on in RAF, but in a 3.3 state, it is only a five minute cooldown, which is very useful. So first of all, we're going to look at the different family of pets and what falls under each. So what is a cunning pet? What is a tenacity pet? What is a ferocity pet? And then we'll look at the talent trees. The talent trees are only quite small, so it won't take too long to go through all of them. And then finally, we'll talk about some key buffs and what is ultimately the best pet that you're going to see in PvE and why. Why will you be using that pet? Because really, I'd say there's only one clear winner, but we'll get to that soon. But first, before we get any further, just want to say a quick thank you to all you guys who have either joined as patrons, because there are patrons now. So thank you guys. And to everybody in the scrolling banner below, who has joined the channel as a member. More on how you can support the channel at the end of the video. So as we've mentioned it already, let's use our cool stabled pet and we'll get our ferocity pet out, which is our wolf. Now, ferocity is DPS. So in its talent trees, you expect DPS talents. And when your pet is level 80, you have 16 talent points in total. A lot of the talents are similar from pet to pet. So if we was to bring up a cunning talent tree next to it, you can actually see similar icons in similar places for some of them. But we will have a quick glance through each pet anyway, not going into great detail about what the optimal spec is because that will come in the hunter guide video but this will give you a bit of food for thought so in the top tree you can increase your pet's attack speed by 30 percent with two points with cobra reflexes you've got dash which increases your pet's movement speed by 80 percent and you've got to remember some of these are like abilities that you're used to or used to your pet having but now baked into a talent tree so some of them you'll be like, well, we know we've already got that. That's why we'll go over it fairly quick. With great stamina, you can increase your pet's stamina. With natural armor, you can increase your pet's armor. You can reduce the movement speed penalty of your pet's cower. And if you're not familiar what cower is, your pet cower is reducing damage taken by 40% for six seconds whilst cowering your pet's movement speed is reduced by 50%. While your level in Bloodthirsty is particularly useful because your pet's attacks have a 10% chance to increase their happiness by 5%, and heal for 5% of its total health. Now, putting two points into this just means you haven't got to worry about food because it'll always be happy. Spike Collar is just a flat damage increase. Or Speed just increases your pet's movement speed by 30%. Culling the Herb means when your pet's Claw Bite or Smack ability deals a critical strike, you and your pet deal 3% increased damage for 10 seconds. That's a particularly nice one. Lionheart reduces the duration of stun and fear effects. Charge, of course, is a charge. Heart of the Phoenix every 8 minutes allows when your pet dies for it to miraculously return to life with full health. Don't let your pet die. Spider's Bite increases the critical strike chance of your pet. Great Resistance just increases the resistance. And what you'll notice is like increasing armor, increasing health, increasing resistance. This is all normal things that you would do in the beast training, like what you currently have your beast training menu that you open up in TBC and then you learn sort of new ranks of armor, new ranks of health. Whilst your pet automatically in Wrath of the Lich King learns abilities as it levels, you don't need to go to a trainer to learn abilities or whatever. It will just learn what's relevant to that pet at the relevant level, including new ranks. So the talent tree is just all added benefits on top. Rabid is a particularly good PvE or PvP, or even just out grinding, to be fair. Cooldown. On a 45 second cooldown, your pet goes into a killing frenzy. Successful attacks have a chance to increase attack power by 5%. This effect will stack up to five times and it lasts 20 seconds. Lick Your Wounds is a three minute cooldown where your pet heals itself for 100% of its total health over five seconds. Call of the Wild, which leads down from Spider's Bite, is a five minute cooldown and your pet roars, increasing your pet's and your melee and ranged attack power by 10% for 20 seconds. It's great that you're using a pet that, you know, you've got things like this, really 
powerful, to be fair, powerful DPS cooldowns, even though it's on a five minute cooldown, that's like a pet talent that you would say is almost 100% required in your DPS spec. And then the final two is Shark Attack, where your pet does an additional 3% damage with all attacks, obviously 6% with two points, and Wild Hunt, which increases the contribution your pet gets from your stamina by 20% and your attack power by 15%. And with both points, you're going to get 40% stamina and 30% attack power. So it's quite clear to see that Ferocity is the DPS, the DPS pet. That's the pet that everybody is going to use when you're raiding. And it's quite obvious why the talents are all tailored to DPS in. So we're not going to go up through every single talent for the other two because really the ferocity pets are the ones that you're going to see the most of. I would argue outside of maybe solo in elites and stuff, there's very little point of using anything other than a ferocity pet when you're DPSing in a raid. But we'll glance over some of the bigger abilities that are unique to ferocity and to cunning. But first, what are ferocity pets? Well, we already know one of them is a wolf, but the special ability of a wolf we didn't talk about, which is Furious Howl, which is a 40 second cooldown and it increases melee and ranged attack power at rank 6 by 320 for the wolf and its master for 20 seconds. So every 20 seconds you've got this up, every 20 seconds you've got it down. Really, really strong. And the wolf is the pet that you're going to see the majority of people using because it's just extra attack power. There's, there's no reason to be using anything other than a wolf, really, unless it's niche circumstances. But the other ferocity pets you can get are wasps. And wasps have an ability called Sting on a six-second cooldown where your wasp stings for 64 to 86 nature damage and decreases the armor of the target by 5% for 20 seconds. So this is basically a fairy fire, but with a pet. As I say, there's a lot of debuffs and buffs that these pets get, and some exotic pets that you can only get as Beast Mastery because you need this talent have got even more special, do I say special abilities? Because they are special abilities. It requires you to be a specific spec to even be able to use them. Getting through this ferocity list a little bit quicker. Tail Striders, Spirit Beasts are also ferocity pets, but like I say, Spirit Beasts are exotic, so you won't be able to use them unless you're Beast Mastery. You've got Raptors, which have an ability called Savage Rend, which slashes the enemy with the Raptor's talons for 59 to 83 damage and causes the target to bleed. For damage every 5 seconds for 15 seconds, successful critical strikes with this ability temporary boost the Raptor's damage by 10% for 30 seconds you've got moths which are very good just for actually out soloing because they have a self heal on a one minute cooldown which increases their attack power and heals it over 15 seconds you've got hyenas which have got a tendon rip which is a slow you've got devil sores which are exotic pets so you're not going to be able to get those unless you are bm same goes for core hounds cats and finally carrion birds and carrion birds have got demoralizing screech which is basically a demoralizing roar so that's the ferocity pets let's have a quick look at the tenacity pets now the tenacity pets are tanks so you expect to see tanking talents some of them still remain the same and you still get charged but you just get it earlier on because you expect to get something like charge earlier on as a tanking pet but you get additional talents that come off of the stamina and the armor talents so now you get Blood of the Rhino, which increases your pet's total stamina and increases all healing effects on your pet by 20%. You can put two points in this for 4% stamina and 40% healing. And you get Pet Bardin, which increases your pet's armor and chance to dodge. And again, you can put two points into this. You get Guard Dog, which increases the effectiveness of your pet's growl. You've got Thunder Stomp, which is a 10 second cooldown and it shakes the ground with Thunder in Force doing 151 to 153 nature damage. This ability causes a moderate amount of threat. So this is just a nice way for your pet to be able to hold AoE aggro when you're out grinding. Grace of the Mantis reduces the chance for your pet to be critically hit by melee attacks. Intervene is as it sounds. It's like a warrior's intervene. Your pet runs at high speed towards a group member, intercepting the next melee or ranged attack made against them. Roar of Sacrifice protects a friendly target from critical strikes, making attacks against that target unable to be critical strikes. But 20% of all the damage taken by the target is also taken by the pet. You get a three minute cooldown taunt. You also get a last stand ability on a six minute cooldown, which temporarily gives your pet 30% of its maximum health for 20 seconds. Wild Hunt's still there, just like the Ferocity pets. And finally, you get Silverback, where your pet's growl also heals it for 1% of its total health. And you can put two points in that as well. So you can see all those talents very unique to that particular pet. And you can sort of already guess before we look the types of pets that are going to be tenacity pets. Your bears, your boars, your crabs, your gorillas, you know, it's fairly 
you can fairly obvious which ones they are but we will just have a quick look anyway you've got bear which is particularly good because it's got a swipe ability an uncapped swipe i might add you've got boars which do more damage with an ability called gore following a charge you've got crabs which have got the pin ability which is just basically a four second route you've got crocolists you've got gorillas gorillas have an interrupt by the way on a 30 second cooldown which is quite nice you've got rhinos but they're exotic so would require bm but if you do have a rhino they get stampede which is basically like mangle but not quite as good because it only does 25 percent bleed damage but still very nice you've got scorpids turtles and of course turtles have still got shell shield so the turtle partially withdraws into its shell reducing damage taken by 50 percent you've got warp stalkers which have got their teleport ability and finally you've got worms which are an exotic pet again so only bm hunters and these have an acid spit which reduces the armor of the target by 10 percent per spit and it stacks two times. So pretty much what you would expect from a tanking pet. But I mean, these talents do just make the pets just feel better. You know, the things that you can do. I know some of these abilities are similar or the same. You might be like, we've got that already or we've got something like that already. But still, just having these talents for me and being able to distinguish between three clear different types of pet, one which you're going to use for utility, one that you're going to use for tanking, one that you're going to use for DPS, and just having one of each of those in the stable, which of course you can call once every five minutes, is really nice. So you can just use it for whatever situation you want. Last but not least, the cunning pets. So cunning is a bit of a mix between tenacity and ferocity, to be fair, because you get things like Owl's Focus, where your pet's got a 30% chance with two points after using an ability that the next ability will cost no focus if used within eight seconds or you get dive which is like a sprint you get mobility which then leads on from that which reduces the cooldown of your pet's dive ability or dash ability you get carry and feeder on a 30 second cooldown where your pet can generate health and happiness by eating a corpse will not work on the remains of elemental or mechanical creatures it's worth mentioning as well like great resistance is in a different area and when we're talking about great resistance in the ferocity section i probably wasn't clear that it's actually a flat damage reduction from arcane fire frost nature and shadow magic rather than giving you a specific amount of resistance if that makes sense so you've got cornered when at less than 35 percent health your pet does 50 percent more damage and has a 60 percent reduced chance to be critically hit you get feeding frenzy where your pet does 16 percent additional damage to targets less than 35 percent health you get roar of recovery which is on a three minute cooldown where your pet's inspiring roar restores 30 percent of your total mana over nine seconds you get wolverine bite on a 10 second cooldown down which is a fierce attack causing 405 damage modified by pet level and your pet can use it after it makes a critical attack and it cannot be dodged blocked or parried you've got wild hunt at the bottom there just in a different position and you've got ball headed which comes off of cornered which on a three minute cooldown removes all movement impairing effects and all effects which cause loss of control of your pet and reduces damage done to your pet by 20 percent for 12 seconds down in the bottom here you've got grace of the mantis and roar of sacrifice both of which we've already spoke about so cunning is actually very nice i mean cunning for me is more of a a solo pet you know one that you could potentially use while you're leveling because maybe you don't need a tanking pet because you're not killing elites you don't need a dps raw dps pet but you've got a lot of utility with a cunning pet really with things where it's on low health it does more damage when the mobs on low health it does more damage it's got some good stuff there but Ultimately, if you're not using a wolf, you are going to lose out on that attack power. And then finally, let's just talk a little bit about the exotic pets. So exotic pets require you to be beast mastery, but then you can get some pets that no nobody else can get. They normally just look really nice. You know, that ultimately is what you're getting them for because they look really good. Like the spirit beasts. There's four in total. One that you get from Grizzly Hills, which is Arcturus. Then you've got Gondria. You've got Lochnahak from Sholazar Basin, which is going to be one that everybody's wanting. And you've got Skull from the Storm Peaks. Now, they all get an ability called Spirit Strike, which is basically a Moonfire. But you're really not getting these for the Moonfire. You're not really that bothered about the Moonfire. You're getting them because they just look amazing. Then some other ones that are just unique to Wrath but are exotic and you will need BM to get are things like a Worm or a Rhino or a Corehound or even a Silithid. I don't know who would really go BM just to get a Silliford. I mean, he doesn't even look very good. Now, I'm guessing if you're watching this or you've watched it, because we're pretty much done now, we've looked at the three types of pets, the talent trees that you get, the fact that you can call your pet wherever you are, you know, swapping them around in the stable. I'm going to be working on BM survival and marksman videos all day today or tomorrow, depends when this goes out. So if you're a hunter, 
and you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the other Hunter class videos. But just backtracking slightly to the pets, like I say, the majority of people are going to be using a wolf. There are use cases for other pets, don't get me wrong, but really the wolf getting the attack power for you and your pet is just too good to pass up. But in PvP or when you're out on your own doing different things or even in dungeons, you might opt for something else. But now you know what most of the pets do and all of that jazz. Anyway, so be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, what do I normally say at the end? Yeah, roll the outro. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member. You get access to emotes. Everyone will know you're a member when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you on the next one.